So here's the thing with AEW fans. If you announced the Blackpool Combat Club versus The Firm and the Young Bucks versus The Butcher and the Blade, you're going to sell X number of tickets. If you have those exact same people on the show, but now it is Moxley and Claudio versus The Young Bucks, guaranteed you're selling more tickets. The exact same guys on the show, guaranteed you're selling more tickets. This person here notes, I remember a house show in the 90s I went to. On the house show, Steve Austin and The Undertaker teamed up together. And he goes, you never saw this on television. But like, holy smokes, I can buy a ticket and see Steve Austin and The Undertaker team up on television. And holy smokes, that's like a big deal. And Brian. you could also have like, well, you know, Steve Austin's going to face Rockabilly. And The Undertaker is going to face, comma, the Supreme Fighting Machine. And it's like, you'll sell X number of tickets. But all of a sudden, if you put Steve Austin and The Undertaker teaming together, all of a sudden, you're just automatically selling more tickets. Because it's like something, wow, I actually get to see that for my money. That's what you want fans to think for a house show. Wow, I get to see that for my money. And nothing against anybody on this AEW house show. But there is no match here where as a fan, you're going to think, Wow, I get to see that for my money? That's what you need to give the people. That's Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn at that house show. When they announced that match, six, 800 people all of a sudden went, Wow, I get to see that for my money? And they all bought tickets. That's the key to a house show. And look, I can't say that I love the main event, but let's remember what house shows used to be for as well, too, which was having different types of matchups and trying to place people against each other and experience. That's something that a lot of the AEW roster needs. So looking forward to some of it. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I see people here saying, oh, man, here we go. Listen, no one's saying this is a disaster yet. I don't know what the economics are. I don't know what the finances are. I don't know what the it, nothing. I don't know anything. Okay. Well, what I know is that, according to WrestleTix, the building is a 3,800-seat building. It is set up for about 2116, and it looks like they've sold around 1,000 tickets, okay? The show's tomorrow. I believe with a stronger card, with a Moxley Hangman main event, Young Bucks versus whatever, it would have done better and could do better. And uh, that's that's what I think. And I think that that's what you need to do if you want to sell more tickets for these pay-per-views. Loading up on some liquid energy here. Uncle Howdy. Why does he do this? Why does he do this? <laughs> that's like the Uncle Howdy thing. Why You're does he do that? you me to explain Uncle Howdy? Yes. Someone needs to put that to music, some 70s song, for the best of the Brian and Vinny show. Yeah, keep it off this show, please. Why does he do this? Why does he do this? That's like the Uncle Howdy thing. We're going to get kicked off whatever run. Boo. You just disgusted Granny. That's like the Uncle Howdy thing. What a jamming song that is. Yeah, keep it off this show, please. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.